Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. Uh, Wendy is my co-host. My name is Danica Joan, and today's special guest is Caroline Rena. Now, we asked Caroline Rena to come on because she there's a couple of things that she um, brings to families who are going through contentious relationships and so forth. Uh, one of them is the fact that she was an interviewee in the Erasing Family doc documentary. And that's something we definitely want to ask her about. But also, one of the things that she brings to the table are the healing arts. And a lot of times when you feel like you're in the midst of a storm and, um, and everything is stressful and you're full filled with anxiety and everything, a lot of times it's great to have somebody who comes into your life and says, okay, let me show you some techniques on how it is that you can ground yourself and find peace uh, in all of this. So welcome, Caroline. Thank you, Danica. I'm uh, glad to be here. Uh, <laughs> our pleasure. One, um, one of the things that I also, before we get started with your interview, I wanted to ask Wendy, you know, what's hmm. going on with, I noticed you, you've got this closed Facebook uh, actually a, a closed support group and how's it going because you just started it um, it's going awesome actually tonight we are which when this airs will have been last night because we're we're recording this the night before it airs but um, we are about to have our very first support group meeting so it's the members only parental alienation support community where uh, people, it's a membership program, and part of our program is that we have two support group meetings per month. So we're getting ready tonight to have our very first support group meeting, and it's going great. Um, we had quite a few people join this week at the last minute, specifically because they want to participate in the support group meeting. So I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to our uh, first support group meeting. So yeah, it's going great. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I'm just so thrilled. The, this opportunity of doing Custody Matters Live and doing it week after week and, and inviting special guests on from different uh, modalities, different areas that can provide uh, our viewers you know, resources and stuff like that. It's been wonderful for me. I know several people have reached out to me for coaching and it, you know, it's, that's my, my expression in the world is how I can help other people just like you, Wendy. Um, helping other people is what we're, we're here to do, right? Yes. All right. Let's get to that interview. Caroline, tell yes. us who you are, <laughs> tell us where you live uh, and tell us a little bit about how it is that you are connected with high conflict families. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so who, who am I? That's, that's been an ongoing journey for me. Um, so in what, in what capacity are we talking when you ask that? Just okay, so well, let's start with um, what area on, of the planet do you live in? Okay, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually live in uh, South Florida. I am in um, Lake Worth. And I'm from Virginia, but I've been down here for, um, I guess, four years now, coming up on four and a half in December. So, uh, yeah. And we met, we met up in Washington, D.C. last June. In person, yeah, but we've known each other longer than that, I, I, I think. Both of you, mm -hmm. you know, we follow each other, yeah. And what brought you up to D.C. last year? A couple of things. Um, the Erasing Family documentary was one. Uh, I was meeting the director, Ginger Gentile, up there for recording at my um, uh, storage room up there. So I was packing out the storage room to bring back down here. And the second thing was the AFCC conference. Um, I think that, is that the correct? Uh, she wanted me to meet her there, so I did, I did that. And um, that was, that's where I met you guys at that at the yeah. meet and greet after after the first night or yeah i think so yeah. Yeah, a while. Yeah. great because we got to yeah. meet dr childress and i got to meet yeah. wendy and you and several other people that that we've spent years knowing of each other at, right. but not meeting each other so it was right right that was awesome yeah that was during the same time that uh, myself and rod mccall went with Dr. Craig Childress to deliver the petition, mm -hmm. the petition to end the pathology of parental alienation for all children everywhere to the APA, the American Psychological Association. And we had several evening 
uh, meet and greets, just social gatherings. And, and you both came to one of those. And that's when we all met in person for the first time. So I think that was one of my most favorite things about that whole trip was just meeting people, you know, and connecting yeah. with people that, that I've known for a long time, but haven't got to meet face to face. So I, I really love that. I love, I love it when we get an opportunity to, to get together like that in person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going up to uh, Washington DC in August so for, for a conference. So, uh, which I love, I love the opportunity. So maybe I can plant some seeds and make some connections with some other advocates up there while I'm there. Mm -hmm. All right, so Caroline, tell me a little bit about what, how you are of service to, to families who are going through high conflict situations. Well, I kind of do it in a couple of ways. Um, aside from erasing family, um, just, my, just by virtue of my uh, reunification with my son, he's in the film, uh, my daughter isn't. Uh, but I have, I, our, our relationship has grown immensely since, since we started working on it and the film kind of put that out there. So, um, using the film to meet people and explain what's going on and just being that person who, um, who shares, you know, or, and, and is looking for locations to play the film. And at the same time, at some time, I hope to also speak, um, at, at the, some of the, uh, showing of the film. Um, I have, again, as you mentioned, I have the, um, the support groups myself. There's a, they're both called Glimmers of Hope. One is just for, is for alienated moms because of my, you know, my situation. I, I never, since I've been going through this for about almost 20 years, it's probably 20 years by now. Um, I had not no one when I started going through this, as you know, I mean, Danica, we were kind of starting at about the same time. So there was nothing out there. There was nothing online. I couldn't find anybody. There was nobody, no connections or anything. So, um, so starting this, when I finally got in my, you know, centered space to be able to be there for people without totally breaking down, I was at least able to offer it, you know, even though I didn't really need it as much, um, as I did before. So I have those groups, the one for the moms. I purposely uh, started the ones for all inclusive because of the grandparents, the aunts, uncles, the fathers. Um, I kept getting responses back. Well, how come you don't have anything for dads and, you know, whatever. And that was before um, I started noticing all the gender, you know, bashing and stuff like that. So I try to keep my groups um, safe loving, healing, you know, and if anybody, I'm like, I, I'm not, I, I don't watch it like a hawk. I've got a couple of people helping, but it's important to me that this is about healing and love and, you know, coming out of this and becoming centered and healed as much as possible to be able to do the work that you guys do that I'm, that I'm working into um, in order to change things. You know, you can't have angry people out there trying to change the world because it just doesn't work that way, <laughs> you know? So you got to have a, a space inside of you where you're, you're finally in a place where you can, you know, bring that out to the world, that love and, and stuff, but it does, it just doesn't work that way. So those are available, um, for people to join as well. And like I said, it, it like, and you guys, brought it out is more for healing rather than, you know, some people ask questions and stuff and talk about courts and suggestions and things like that, which is fine, but it's just safety, um, love. That's, that's the basis. I think that's one of the most important things out more there. Spiritual. What, what I get yeah. is that yeah. is you're bringing more of a spiritual healing aspect, more yeah. of, of a, like an inner peace uh, yeah. to space and, and also dealing with um, creating programs that have to do with music. And yeah, that's sound and, and things like that. Yeah. So um, my 20 year journey journey led to an interesting, uh, an interesting, um, well, piece in the last few, the last couple of months. Um, I used to sing and play the piano and the violin and the cello as a child. And um, I went into this back then, went into this whole not good enough stuff because my family was going through a divorce at the same time too. And I had things happen at that point, like all of us. And I totally um, stopped singing and stopped playing any instruments at around, I don't know, 13 or something. And I didn't even, I wouldn't even bother with it. Wouldn't take a look back. I, I was done. I liked listening to music, but I wouldn't sing even, I mean, I eh, a little bit, but um, and then a couple of months ago, I was trying, I was working on starting um, a support group, right, the writing support group. I don't know if you guys saw any of that stuff I was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. And I met um, my singing partner 
and we he has he's a therapist so he has a, an office where he has music equipment and when i walked in here i was like oh wow that's pretty cool so i was trying to like saddle him into helping me with the uh support group and one day we just started talking and i said hey can we play some uh cover songs and he's like well sure so we played cover songs for about 15 20 minutes and then he's like well do you want to see how i write a song i was like okay so he starts strumming his guitar and starts saying vocalizing he that's what he calls it i think it's like ah, da, 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 you know and i heard words so we wrote our we ended up writing our first song in about an hour and a half over over a couple of days um and the music is we we call it healing medicine music um, taken from his journey in his life, mine in my life separately. And as we heal, we come together with the words and attack and put the songs together and it becomes something pretty powerful, really powerful. I think, I feel like, um, and we also play it. He, he has the guitar set for 432 Hertz, um, which is a healing resonance vibration, um, that actually goes down to the cellular level. Uh, and it heals in the body. So um, it's really exciting because, okay. go ahead. I wanted to bring up that. I mean, if you don't know about it, I would definitely encourage you to, to look into about the different frequencies and stuff like that, because even if you are not knowledgeable about it, I think everybody can, can get that there's certain kinds of music that just mm -hmm. are agitating and yeah. some that are much more peaceful and, and uh, uh, you know, to, that bring you more peace. Right, so, right. I think it's um, even at that particular level, maybe you don't get into um, the the numbers and stuff like that. I think most people can agree that there's certain kinds of music that bring peace and some that bring agitation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Caroline, yeah. I was I was wondering your music partner, um, did he experience parental alienation as well? Or was there a different experience he had that, mm -hmm. that made him um, interested in this kind of healing music that's very therapeutic? He's he's been doing this for years. He's actually um, he's been writing songs consistently the same way we've been doing it basically for uh, a few years and he's been out on the you know doing local music um, at different places but it's all spiritually based that he did but when we brought it together it turned it, we have a different you know um, uh, connection obviously because there's two of us now um, but he still he still does his his music um, and it's just it's beautiful too it's um, it's part of him you know now now it's combined but um, yeah, he never went through parental alienation, but he was divorced. He's he's been divorced, and he's got a child, um, and yeah, so he gets that part of it. And he, I, you know, from what I've, I still, even within the last week, I went through some grief work around my daughter, and he was supporting. He was very supportive of that, and I needed to do that to get to move on to my next level because I had to get that stuff out. It was just like holding back, holding me back. My daughter's actually getting married next uh, weekend, not this coming weekend, but next weekend. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been tricky for me. So um, I had to, I had to work through that and it just started bubbling to the surface. And it's like mm -hmm. the music and the, you know, the therapy and the, uh, yeah. So it's been pretty intense over the last week, but it's the, the music helps with the healing aspect of it too. So yeah, that's why it's really important. Do you have a relationship with your daughter right now or are you still? No, on that? Um, it actually was interesting because last year when I went up for the um, event up at the AFCC conference, um, I did see, I stayed with my stepmother in Virginia and she was there and she, I met her boyfriend who asked her to marry him about a week later uh, while I was up there. And it was interesting because when she saw me, she actually approached me to give me a hug. And then it was the last, it was the last time she, she basically, um, was talking to me. So, you know, I mean, it's her, it's her path and it's her journey. And I, and she's, and I can't, I can't do anything about it, but I can do something about mine. And that's why it's so important for my healing work. So I could be out there to support um, her when she's ready to come back. Um, and others, I, I, my biggest thing is being able to, to show, um, you know, m the biggest thing for me was my family when it was all going on called me stranger danger. And I know that, you know, there's, there's, as you guys know, it's like there's this um, thing that these kids think about us that aren't true. And if if the if the kids out there in these groups who are starting to connect with us can see that, 
you know, this person they're talking to, well, you're not stranger danger. And I'm, and my biggest thing is, well, if I'm not stranger danger and you're not afraid of me, then this is your parent. You know, this is, mm -hmm. this is who your parent is and there's no need to be afraid of reconnecting with your parent. You know, and that's, that's the thing that goes in my head to, to help with the reunification process. I don't know where that's going. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm hoping maybe the music will help with that or, you know, the, the, the film, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point. Just something's got to help. You know, so is there a way that people can hear your music? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we are set up on um, Facebook uh, at in divinity i n d i v i n i t y eighty eight, um, as well as Instagram with the same. Uh, we're on Twitter. Um, I believe that's at in divinity p, and then on YouTube. Uh, it's the same thing. We're on um, In Divinity Productions. There is another In Divinity on YouTube, but that's not us. So we have, I wish I had a picture of our um, of our logo, but it's it's more, it's like an infinity sign that looks like vibrations and in, in rainbow colors. And then In Divinity is in the middle of the, is in the middle of the, um, hold on a second. I've got help. <laughs> well, we also, we can find the link to it or if you could yes. send us a link and we'll, we'll put it in the comments. Um, okay. There's what, that's what it looks like. So if oh, you see it, cool. yeah, yeah. So my, I think it's so good that you're focusing on healing and you mentioned, um, that sometimes people talk about family court in your support groups and things like that, but that, um, you know, not all people going through parental alienation go to court at all. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just deal with it on their own. They don't go to court. And so the whole court yeah. issue is, a little bit irrelevant for some people, but everybody who goes through parental alienation needs some kind of healing, period. 100%. Um, yep. Yeah. So I just think it's so, it's so great that you're focusing on that and, and everybody needs to uh, practice self-care. I know that's a big buzzword now. Everybody talks about self-care, but um, it's, it's really, really important to, to heal yourself you know, as you said, for, for when your daughter is able to have a relationship with you again, mm -hmm. um, or even if she's not, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's important for, for you, you know, for ourselves to, to go through healing and to be um, as healthy as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And what I've also noticed too, is that the older, the older we get, if we've been through all this trauma and, you know, this, this PTSD or, you know, whatever these words are, the people throwing around mm -hmm. um, that mean that, that are, you know, the pain and the hurt and everything else, the older we get it, like in, in sticks in our bodies and, and it needs release in some way, whether it's, you know, I mean, there's different ways that I, that I've experienced for myself that I work with other people or help other people to, to do to experience so they can get it out, you know, and mm -hmm. the older you get, if you don't do anything about it, it just gets, it, it, it just gets worse. It doesn't seem to get better. So, um, you know, and it can cause, it can cause disease in your body if you hold it in. And, and one thing I, I always talk to my clients and I say, you've got to, to compartmentalize that, that painful, disempowering part of your life and you really need to work on something building yourself up in some way and the music can help um mm -hmm. different kinds of of groups that you're involved in art music you know mm -hmm. uh, a hobby it's so important i know for me personally i it ended up manifesting into cancers in my body uh, mm -hmm. and going wow. through the the custody battles and stuff like that so it's what you're doing is is definitely uh, teaching people how to deal with um, a disempowering thing in their life and what, by expressing themselves creatively. Mm -hmm. Right, and and what's it's it's important for me because um, just to give a real quick flashback, you know, I mean when all, when I, when it all started for me, it was I was in the basement in the house that I was living in. Um, with all the blinds drawn on the floor in what I call a dark night of the soul. I mean, I was just like this on the floor, you know, and it took me all the, these, the, all, <laughs> you know, all the work, the research and the j pathways and journeys and trying to find all this stuff. And it's not, you know, it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, but when you get there, you guys know this. I mean, look at you, you, you guys aren't in that. I'm sure you were in a similar space as I was. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, it's such a different, um, such a different way of looking at life and experiencing life. I never thought I'd be singing and being on stage. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, holy cow, this is so cool. I'm like so excited. I feel like I'm a, I'm a little kid again, you know, and it's fun, 
but you have to get rid of all that stuff in order to get there because if it's there it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to do that it's not that simple so you know and just having people around to help help with that to get to get you back up into that space at least to start with self-care which is the most important thing is is um the best you know beginning you just got to be willing you got to make a choice and you got to just step into it and do it you know you can't just say yeah okay i know self-care or whatever but and then not do it it's more that it's also the fact that you want to be a person that your children want to be around mm -hmm. and do they want to be around somebody who's, you know, just a, a shell of a person, a person who's, right. who's depressed and, right. and, uh, right. and is, it, it actually yeah. brings up their fears more, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fears that are already inside of them that have already been ingrained in them when they yeah. see that. Like, I mean, most of them have been, you know, led to believe that, you know, we're crazy, we're unstable, we're, you know, not mentally healthy, what, whatever words you want to use. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you really are not taking care of yourself and you're not in a healthy place and, and they can see that, then that that's confirmation to them. Oh, right. wow. Yeah. They really are messed up and, and that makes them even more fearful and hesitant uh, to try to have a relationship with us. Right. And, yeah. to your, and to your point, I, I totally remember those days, Caroline, like just um, laying on the floor in a fetal position, you know, mm -hmm. just crying. It, it sounds like, you know, dramatic, but I mean, it's true. You know, I mean, that's how painful yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I do think that you kind of have to go through that. I, I mean, who wouldn't go through that? Because it's the most painful thing you could go through. You never would have expected it or even imagined that it could happen. And I, there's, there's, it's really like grieving, you know, it's like disbelief and mourning and, and all those stages. Um, and then hopefully we do get to a point where we're like, you know, got to deal with this and, and take care of myself, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's not to say that every day you're like, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, singing and dancing every it's day. Every day you know? <laughs> that will never but, um, happen. <laughs> it, no, no, that yeah. that's, that's not real. I mean, <laughs> we still have, you know, sad, for sure, sad times yeah. and, and like, what you are experiencing right now with, you know, the upcoming wedding. And, and I have that same exact situation. Mm. Uh, so it's, um, it's hard, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's really yeah. hard. And, and it's hard when you stop and think about things like weddings, special events, and, um, you know, you're going to be excluded. And there are people who they've already been turned against you and they've never even met you and they've never even talked to you at all. Like they don't know you at all. Right. You know, right. and, and that I, I struggle with that because I think, gosh, you know, how sad is that, that, that other adults um, just seem to lose their own critical thinking skills, you know, just to think for themselves and to get to know somebody for themselves. It's, you know, so there are some really, still some really upsetting times, but I, I think we have to have balance in our lives and we have to take care of ourselves as much as possible. Right. Right. And, and what's important it, 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 along with that is like that, dark night of the soul, the crying, you know, the fetal position, that's actually a release. You know, it, it gets rid of the anger, the fear, the pain, all that stuff is just an energy that's held inside of our bodies. So when we do cry and grieve um, and, and do all that, it hurts. It will hurt. I guarantee you, I read somewhere it's something about six minutes or something, but it feels like it's, you know, hours that you're going through it. But once you're done, it's like, you know, I can, I can breathe again. And um, it's so, I feel like it's so important. And what I have learned, because a lot of people talk about this and I thought about, I, I talked about it for many years, the grieving process, you can grieve someone who's alive. You just have mm. to make it in your head, in your mind, a, another loss. It's a loss rather than a death. And it's, it's, I know, you know, for many years I was like, well, like, how can I grieve my kids? They haven't died. They're still there. And I, I just had to change that thought process excuse me, that thought process in order to be able to do that, but it really, really helped, you know, release all that, um, all that pain and, and hurt and everything. So it was a good, it was a good process. So. <laughs> well, um, it, we have to wrap up, unfortunately. Okay. I right. really appreciate you, Caroline, for coming on, Thanks sharing with us, share, sharing with our viewers, uh, for one thing, the importance of self-care and there are different ways of of nourishing ourselves and bringing healing to our uh to ourselves but most importantly loving ourselves and bringing healing no matter mm -hmm. what stage we are in um 
you know, in the circumstance we have with our children. So, uh, well, let's see here. We are, we, I always like to end with Wendy saying, and I'll let her say it. She, uh, so take it away, Wendy. All right. Parental alienation can happen to anyone, so it should matter to everyone. All right. Thank you. See you again next week. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.